ReflectorCAD is a paradigm shifting design tool for designing segment reflectors. Segment reflectors, for example, are commonly used for automotive headlamps. New automobile styles require that the headlamp conform to the sculpted shape of the car body. Absent from most new cars are the traditional sealed beam parabolic reflectors and cylindrical cover lenses, simple examples of which we can see here. These are being replaced by segment reflectors containing clear windscreens, an example of which I have here. Segment reflectors transfer the optical power or beam shaping refractive qualities of the cylindrical cover lenses to individually curved and oriented segments comprising the reflector. Each segment contributes to the luminous intensity produced by the headlamp. Transferring lighting control exclusively to the reflector allows headlamp designers additional degrees of freedom to sculpt a clear cover lens or windscreen into the body of the car, something that cannot be done aesthetically or easily with cylindrical lenses. The fundamental question becomes, how does one design a segment or reflector? In other words, what is the workflow? Let's take a look at an example. Reflector CAD was developed as a new design paradigm and packaged as a true graphical user interface to provide a long needed illumination first order design tool for segment reflectors. Reflector CAD allows you to graphically lay out the reflector segments, to compute very quickly the approximate intensity from individual segments or all of the segments in a source, and most importantly, to graphically adjust the radiometric output from each individual segment. Reflector CAD then automatically will adjust and create that segment corresponding to that particular radiometric output. Reflector CAD will also automatically fill in the spaces between segments with inner segment fillers and allow you to 3D visualize the reflector, source, segment shadowing, and inner segment fillers. The resulting reflector segmentation geometry, including inner segment fillers, can be directly output to ASAP for further detailed engineering design and analysis or to an IGES file for use with the CAD package. Another very important feature in reflector CAD is the ability to visualize a gradient anywhere within the luminous intensity output screen. This is a very important feature as gradients are becoming a more and more important requirement in the design of reflector systems. Let us now start a design from the ground up, but before we get to the actual design, let's explore the actual reflector CAD interface. On the left hand side, we have an area where we'll be entering the actual segments of the reflector. On the right hand side, we have the area which is going to be the luminous intensity output from each one of the individual segments as well as the reflector as a whole. In each area, you have the ability to set the grid spacings, for example, in terms of uh, snaps per grid cell and the grid spacings for the segmented reflector. You also have the ability to set the same grid and snap settings in the output window. In addition to setting up the grid spacings for both the segment reflector portion of the screen as well as the output, we can adjust some other parameters in the output properties box. In the output properties box, you will see you have the ability to adjust the vertical range of the luminous intensity output as well as the horizontal range of the luminous intensity output. Additionally, you will see an output scaling series of boxes. Reflector CAD actually does not take into account the Fresnel reflections at the segmented surfaces. It also does not model the lens in the system, but you can put in bulk scaling factors in order to reduce the amount of flux transmit it from the reflector to the actual luminous intensity pattern. Additionally, you have the ability to change the output type. In our particular example, we're going to be looking at luminous intensity, but you could also set the output to be illuminance. Next, I'm going to start the reflector CAD workflow by clicking on the setup button. Here I will set the system units. In this case, we're going to use millimeters. I will then set up my base reflector. The base reflector in this case is going to be a very simple parabola, which has a radius of curvature of 80 millimeters, and, will, and the focus of the parabola will be located at the global origin of my optical system. Additionally, I have the ability to enter some simple output aperturing of the reflector. In this case, it's going to have a racetrack shape with these following parameters. I will also have reflector CAD insert a hole of approximately 20 millimeters in diameter for which I can put in a, a bulb. 
ReflectorCAN has the ability to accept other types of surfaces as well. For example, you can import surfaces from ASAP, or you can translate IGES surfaces and use those base surfaces in ReflectorCAD. Next, I will set up the source or assign the source that I want to use for my particular design. Come up to the Source button, click on the Properties option, and come over and choose my source. ReflectorCAD has a variety of different sources that you can use for various automotive applications, including arc sources, uh, head and uh, fog lamp sources, LEDs, and tail and signal lamps. In our particular example, we're going to be designing a fog lamp, so I will click on the fog lamp section, and I will come over and I will grab an HB3 source. We can take a look at the model itself with the View Model button, and in this picture you can see that it is a very detailed example of an HB3 headlamp. Some important points to understand about ReflectorCAD. First of all, this model was actually created in Bro Research Organization's Advanced Systems Analysis Program. It is a very sophisticated model which includes a variety of mechanical and optical mechanical properties, including an actual filament. ReflectorCAD actually does not use all of this information. It is going to primarily be using the ray information in its calculations. I will next position the source with respect to the global coordinate system in my reflector and click OK. At this point, I'm now ready to begin entering segments. So I will come up to my segment button and I will click on the segment and I'll enter in my first segment. ReflectorCAD creates the segment and draws the luminous intensity pattern corresponding to that particular segment. Now in normal reflector designs, what I would end up doing is adding additional segments over here, each contributing to the luminous intensity pattern, and then I would have to come over and use some algorithm to change the prescription of these particular segments in order to get the desired output. As I mentioned previously, ReflectorCAD is an entirely new paradigm. In fact, what I will do is I will actually come over and operate on the luminous intensity pattern, changing that pattern to the desired shape that I want from that particular segment by dropping and dragging the various areas around the luminous intensity pattern, and ReflectorCAD will automatically update the shape of the segment in order to produce that particular luminous intensity pattern. Now in the segmented area of the display screen, you will see a series of contour lines in the particular segment. What this indicates is whether this new segment is above or below the base surface that you've identified. We're ready to insert our next uh, segment. I come up to my segment button, and I'll begin creating my new segment, and we'll see that the luminous intensity pattern from that particular segment with the source that I've defined now appears over in the output window. Once again, I will be able to take this luminous intensity segment and move it and reshape it to my desired output, and ReflectorCAD will automatically update that particular segment. Now, I can click outside of the segments which I have defined, and I see the sum total of the luminous intensity patterns from each of the individual segments. Or I can actually click on each individual segment itself and see the contribution from that. I have two segments defined. I'm, now I'm ready to create a third segment. This is a luminous intensity pattern from the third segment. I'm ready to reposition this third segment to give the desired performance that I want from this segment. You will note in the, in the design that I'm doing, I'm actually tilting or adjusting luminous intensity patterns from the inner segments to correspond to the luminous intensity pattern on the outer portion of the beam. And the segments which are furthest away from the lamp actually correspond to the luminous intensity patterns at the center of the beam itself. This is a standard practice in designing segment and reflector systems. What we can see now is the sum total of the distribution of those three segments. The next thing I would like to do is take a look at how those segments actually appear with respect to the simple source that I've defined. You can see the three segments and the source down here. ReflectorCAD automatically puts in the inner segment fillers for me. 
I do have a small problem here that I have to correct in my design. First, this center segment filler is much too large for production purposes. This center segment filler over here actually has a direct path to the source, so light from the source can reflect off of or scatter off of that inner segment filler, causing a glare problem in the beam pattern. So what I really need to do is I need to shadow this inner segment filler by these other two segments. I can also look at these, that information numerically inside of ReflectorCAD. By highlighting a segment, such as my center segment here, then with the shift and mouse keys, I can determine how far in front of or behind a particular segment is with respect to another segment. Green is good. Red is not so good. Now what I can do is come in to each one of these individual segments, go to their vertex properties, and actually shift them with respect to one another. I'll have Reflector CAD redevelop all of the segments, and then I will look at these in my 3D viewer once again. And I still have a small problem with this inner segment filler here, which I'll have to correct. Now I have my segments shattered by one another, so that direct radiation from the source will not hit the inner segment filler and cause a glare problem in the resulting um, beam distribution. Now I could continue the design, and in doing so, put in each one of the other segments for this quadrant, as well as this quadrant and this quadrant in the lower right hand corner. Reflector can has an easier way of setting up these segments, however. I can come to my segment button and click on Mirror Existing Segments. I have the ability to mirror segments about the X and the Y axes. I will first mirror them about the Y axes, maintaining the same um, or mirroring the aim points of those particular segments. Next, I will come back to my segment button and mirror the existing elements about the X axes, but I don't want to mirror the aim points because I want the distribution pattern from those segments to end up in the lower portion of my output window. And now you can see the contribution from each individual segment and the total contribution from the reflector itself. It's always a good practice to check the reflector and the segment spacings with respect to each other to make sure there's not a problem with the inner segment fillers. And clearly down here I have a problem with these two segments. The inner segment filler is clearly visible or in direct path to the actual source itself and that will produce a glare problem. I can come in and adjust each one of these segments if I want to, but what I will do in this case is I will delete both of them and create a single segment in their place. Once again, the exciting new paradigm with Reflector CAD is the ability to move the luminous intensity pattern, dragging it and dropping it to the desired distribution that I want, with Reflector CAD automatically updating the segment itself. In this case, there is a very small, if no, inner segment filler visible, and that's probably good enough for this point of, uh, in my design cycle. I now have designed a segment reflector for a front fog lamp application in literally a matter of minutes. I now have the option of exporting this to either an IGES file or to ASAP for further analysis.